So boys, 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 welcome back. Today, oh, today's gonna be a big game. We're playing this little small peasant team. You may have heard of them. They're called, um, what do you call them? Barcelona? I don't know if you've heard of them. They're really small. Got a couple of decent players. We should steamroll them. <laughs> but like I said, yesterday's video was our first match in the Champions League against Juventus. Look, we absolutely, we just beat the brakes off them. But Juventus and uh, Barcelona got slightly different teams. First things first, have a couple things to clear up. I noticed whenever I was editing out the video that I didn't really overly explain the Asan Quadrago thing. Some people were asking, did we buy him? No, we brought him in on loan for the season with the option to buy Prevzi. He has a buy clause thing of 9 million. He's got a minimum fee release clause of 8.5 million, so we're going to get him for 8.5 million to 9 million no matter what we do. He's one I definitely want to bring in. Look, 18 years old. Look, once again, a very sporting Lisbon type signing. Look, got a good mentality. He's consistent. Six foot three, big, strong, physical, super cheap. Not on big wages. Apparently, I needed the burp in between that. But he's one I definitely want to sort of be a backup to Tranquil. Look, he's only 18 years old. He's not going to expect to be jumping straight into the team straight away. And like, he's absolutely perfect. And then when Tranquil, we inevitably lose. Look, the two players, the three players, I think we're probably going to lose at some point. Gao Karras. Trincao and probably Dame Monday. I think they're the players that we're going to really, really struggle to hold on to. Hizelmand, it's hit and miss because he's like a defensive midfielder and like they're not usually sought after too much, but like Trincao and Gao Keres are going to be super hard to keep a hold of and then Dame Monday because Dame Monday is like our star defender. But like I said, if Trincao leaves, I have this guy for a couple of seasons. I'm basically developing. Even now, is he as good as Trinquao? No, but you got to look. 15 dribble and 15 first touch. Long shots of 14. Passing of 14. 16 technique. 16 flair. 16 decisions. The mental stats just need to come up a wee bit, but that's just, he's 18 years old. I mean, that's going to come up with time. Good vision. Good work rate. Like I said, six foot three. Can play reasonably well with both feet. Doesn't have any injury prone traits or anything. Agility is good. Pace is good. Balance is good. Jump and reach is good. And that's the main thing as well. Like he's going to be an aerial threat. Yeah, he's only got 12 heading. But if he can just be an absolute nuisance at 6'3", the bigger your team is, the more of a nuisance you can be. All in all, and like I said, for getting him for like eight and a half million is going to be an absolute steal. And like I said, I'm always thinking hypotheticals. If we lose Trincao, this is going to be the guy to replace him. So then that takes us over into the results. Previously, like I said, you were here. I always say that. I always say that in all my videos. Pretty up. Pretty obviously, it's like a thing that we say here. I don't think it's it's used a lot in like other countries. Like we would say that a lot here in like the UK. Pretty obviously, <laughs> I try. I'm, I'm trying to not say it. The amount of comments I get saying, "Dude, what are you saying?" And because I say it so fast, because of my accent as well, it kind of gets lost in translation. So, yous were here for the Avantis game. Absolutely steamrolled them. Then we went and played Viz or Z or whatever way you want to pronounce it, we beat them 4-0. We had Gao Kara score, Dame Monde score, Ben Zahir score, and Ruben Van Bommel. Dude, Van Bommel has been very, very impressive. Like, I'm not going to lie. The kid is very, very good. And he has a ton of potential too. I know, like, game to game. Like, I've had him in some games, and he's been worth 50, 60, 70 million. In our game, uh, granted, we're also in the Portuguese league, so no meaning is value. If he was in the Premiership, you're talking 50 to 60 million valuation. Like he really, really is. And we got him for 15.5. So he's going to be a really, really good investment over time. But super happy with him. Big, strong, good on the ball. Like I said, we're currently working on his weak foot. Even if we can just get that up to reasonable, would be fantastic. Then we jumped into the cup, the, the League Cup third phase group A. <laughs> and we played, I'm not even going to try and pronounce them. We'll beat them 3-2. Rotated the team out, tried to rest a few people. We had Barrio, so another one super, super impressed with. I know you look over here, you're thinking he doesn't look that good, but like in game, look, is he gonna, am I gonna start him against Barcelona? No. Nets is gonna start. But like the kid is very, very impressive. He's only 19 years old. He'll be a good backup to Nets. And like I said previously, one, here's the thing you don't see too often concentration is very, very high. He's consistent, enjoys the big games, F fantastic at both feet. He can play on both sides. So the versatility of him is the main thing. It's going to be fantastic. So he scored and then Ruben Van Bommel got two. Then we jump back into the Premier League. We played Vereza, Ben Sahir scored and Gao Kara scored. This was the big one. The Man City game. It was a bit of a, a, bit of a clusterfuck. As you can see, his young man got sent off and Aki got sent off for them. We, we had to pretty much go like nearly much on 40 minutes with a man sent off. We did very, very well. We did very well. We scored first. Nets with an absolute banger of a goal. And then Calvin Phillips, I, I'm guessing they brought him on at some point. 
And then, like I said, the two players getting sent off didn't help, especially for us. If we would have got a man sent off, say, the same time, like 83, honestly, we were looking good in game. Look, could we have won the game? I don't know, because we got a man sent off that early. It kind of stumped that I had to bring everybody back and kind of just try and hold out and play sensible because we were 1-0 up. Then, like, fucking six minutes later, we get a man sent off, and it was just a straight red. It wasn't even like he got booked twice. Just a straight red. But all in all, like, one each with Man City. I'm very, very happy, and we were away. Then we jump back into the Premier League, beat them 4-1. Van Bommel got one, Ben Zaheer got one, Trincao got one, and Badi Shebu got one. Badi Shebu is an absolute menace in the box. The kid is just so big. Imagine being like 18 or 19 years old and being six foot five. Like, you're just like oh, massive. But he is very, very good. I'm very, very happy with him. And for all the money we paid, like 14.2 million. Here's the thing as well. Barry Shebu, if you play your cards right, you can get him a lot cheaper. I've got him from anywhere from like 8 million to like 15 million. He's a very, very good center back. I highly, highly recommend him. So then that takes us to our next match, which is in the PT Cup third round. It was a pretty close game. We won 9-1. <laughs> Gao Keres got four. Um, Simic got three. And Trent Cowell got himself two. It's really nice. Simic is starting to get a lot of goals and losses. As you can see, he's developing so fucking well. Like consistent. I mean, got a good personality. Can play fantastic at both feet. Like he's one I highly, highly recommend going and getting. You can usually get him a little cheaper than four, 24 million. Just we waited till like January transfer window because perhaps we lost Pedro. So we had to go and like bam. But you can get him a lot cheaper than that. And like I said, very, very talented at the minute. 15 games, 10 goals, 7 assists and a 7.53. Who wants him? I'd say we could fight off AC Milan. AC Milan, I'm all right with that. Like I said, Gao Keres absolutely killing it as well. 16 games, 16 goals. Only one assist because he usually just bangs it in. He doesn't care. 7.39. Trincao, once again, also playing very, very well. 21 games, 16 goals, 5 assists, and a 7.78 for the season. Who wants him? <sighs> Bayern Munich might be a little rough. But then after that, we went and played, not going to say Parathenaikos, it's Napoli. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in yesterday's episode, right? Um, so yeah, this was a bit of an interesting game. We drew three each. Uh, they scored two OGs. Two OGs. In the third minute, they scored an OG. In the 17th minute, they scored an OG. And then Prevzi, Karas, Gilly, and Raspadori scored for them. You know, they're pretty decent. Karas, Gilly is absolutely fantastic in this game. I'm surprised nobody's picked him up in real life. The kid's extremely good. He's still so young as well. Like, he's only 23. Oh, look at his evaluation. 203 million to 257 million. Also, it's a little strange. Where is he? Where is the big man? Victor Oshman. It's very weird what's going on with Victor Oshman at the minute. Like, he's on loan at Galatasaray. Like, what the fuck is going on? So, apparently, like, I don't know what he's fell out with the people, privacy at Napoli. I don't know if he wants to leave or he wants a bigger contract, but he's having a fall now, privacy. I'm surprised nobody swooped in and just bought him. He would be perfect, like, like a Barcelona team. Like, when Lewandowski's done, like, he could be, like, a future investment, but, like, how much are you going to have to pay for him? Dude is phenomenal. 6-1, can play with both feet. Fucking... Everything's good about it. Probably not the greatest passer or vision, but like he's an out and out striker. But like I just thought it was a little strange. He's on loan at Galatasaray. But yeah, after we drew with them three each, like I said, it was an interesting game. We were all over them. We were all over them. Like, don't look at the two OGs and think, ah, uh, we were lucky to get a draw. Like we were we were playing very, very well. So after that, we went and played back in the Premier League. We played MRT, we beat them 3-0. Net scored, Gao Kara scored, and Simic scored. Then we played BRG, beat them 4-1. Trincao got two. And Ruben Van Bommel. Like I said, Van Bommel's been playing well. Like the kids played seven games, 10 goals, one assist. Perhaps he's had like 12 off the bench. So he scored a couple of times when he came on. But like he's doing very, very well. Still trying to work on his weaker foot. So hopefully like by the end of the season, we can get that up a little bit. Then we stayed in the league talking about that team that I don't know how to pronounce. We beat them 3-1. Trincao got two and Van Bommel got one. Then we played Augsburg in the Champions League. Beat them 5-2. Um, Van Bommel got two. Diamande got one. Trincao got one. And Fidaldo got one. Then back into the league, we played Rio Eve. Beat them 2-0. Uh, Charisma scored and Trincao uh, basically rotated a few people around. We were 
very, very tired at this point. We had a lot of injuries. Then we jumped into the fourth round of the cup. Gao Keres got two, Trincao got two. You can see a bit of a pattern occurring from last year with Trincao and Gao Keres scoring us an absolute shit ton of goals. Then we played in a big bar say, this was a very hard game. I'm not going to lie. This was a hard match. It took a long time for us to like break them down. I think it was like 40. Yeah, Semi scored in the 47th minute and then the goals started coming. I think they changed their formation and then we just kind of rolled them. But Semi got two and Trincao got two. Then we jump back into the Premier League. We played Estrella de Amadora SAD. That's a very long name. And like they have shortened the SAD. So God knows what that stands for. There's not three words there. <laughs> but beat them 3 1. Von Bommel got one. The weak had Dario, the weak defensive midfielder. He's actually very good on the ball. Previously, I'm not going to drop Hijelman for him because Hijelman's insane. But like this kid is very, very good. Look, is he going to be like a world class player? I don't know, but he could be pretty decent. Look. Could improve a lot. And like he's got green arrows up. He seems good on the ball. Got himself a wee goal as well, which helps out a lot. And then Prevzi, Fatawo, Fat, Fat, Fatawo, I like his name. I don't know what it is about it. Once again, working on his weaker foot. Hopefully by the end of the season, that's something. Look, another one, 18 to 21 million. He's young. He's only 20 years old. I mean, he's been in the team. We didn't have to pay any money for him. He's one that can be like a backup as a squad player, which is he's happy to do. So then that leads us to today's game it's got i'm not gonna lie boys it's gonna be a difficult match barcelona is not gonna be an easy game are we at home or away we're at home thank god <laughs> but if we jump over into the league 13 games 13 wins zero draws zero losses plus 38 goal difference we're smashing it we're also 39 points we do have a game in hand we're six points ahead but one point we were 10 but i think we had a few games in hand because people were playing in all our competitions gal Karras, Top of the league for goal scores, Trincao right in behind him. Love to see that. If we can get someone in here and get all three spots, it would be nice. Average ratings, Trincao and Diamande, Fresnita in there. Thomas Lamar is playing for Porto. That's a good signing. That is a good signing. 25 million, honestly, not bad. He's a good player. And then we also have Dennis Seaman in there for clean sheets. Look, him and Diego Costa. Look, I'm happy. If we're keeping clean sheets and scoring a lot of goals, like if you go to the stats, go to the team overview, most goals. We've, we're on 46. We're 16 ahead of anybody anywhere near us. If you just conceded, I would like to be in here, but we are second. We're only two goals behind. Look, we play very, very attacking. So the fact that we've only conceded eight goals, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that because if you go back to the league, I just went past it. Eight goals in 13 games for an attacking team. I'm happy with that. So today's team is going to change a little bit because we do have a few injuries and stuff. Seaman still nets the boss body shape. Charisma is going to come in and play because Diamande is absolutely shattered. The only two people I have fitness problems with, and I've noticed this in FM with Diamande quite a lot, Diamande and both him and what do you call Gao Karras have a lot of like fitness problems. Like they just... They struggle to be fit all the time. Like they're always jaded. Like I get messages from the assistant manager saying that I need to basically rest Gao Karras and Diamande quite a lot. Like they've missed a decent amount of games, but no I mean, I suppose if they're playing a lot, they are going to need a rest. But those two players specifically, like Trincao probably plays the most. He's like our Bruno Fernandes. He just plays all the time. He's just always fit. I shouldn't have fucking said that. He's going to end up getting injured now. But like I said, Charisma's coming in for Diamande. And then Ivan Fresnita is out. He's, he was out for like two months. So uh, Quadrago is uh, currently playing a right back because uh, St. Jude, just St. Just is not ready yet. I'm actually going to put him up there. He's not ready. I just got him back a couple of days ago. He's one, like I said, I would love to have in the team between him and Fresnita. Just playing on the right back position would be fantastic. The man is always injured. Like if you go in this history, Go to injuries. Look at this. Look at this. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, and it's like moderate, major, moderate, 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 major, moderate, moderate, major, major, moderate, moderate, major, major, moderate, moderate. Like, what am I going to do? There's no point in having a right back who's never fit. So he's one. Honestly, I'm probably going to try and move along when I get a chance. Nobody's interested because previously he's been injured. So like, I don't expect him to play. I don't even know how much he's worth. I tried to offer him out for 20 mil. How much is he actually worth? 31 to 34. If I can get 25 mil, 25 to 30 million, I'd be pretty happy with that. And then we can probably bring ourselves in another right back. Even Quadrago, if I could train Quadrago as a right back, I have done it before previously. <sighs> he is very, very good there. 
big strong physical like i said if i can train him at right back it means he can play right back so if fresnid is not there or like maybe fresnid needs a break i can throw quadrago in if trincao needs a break i can put him in there like i said versatility that's the main thing that i've noticed like if you have a lot of versatile players in your team it does help out quite a lot we have a lot of players wanted aston villa and brighton want ribeiro liverpool and ac milan trincao ac milan and Barn, simic ac milan the Bast Wolves. I would say the only one we would maybe have problem with is the Liverpool Gao Karras and maybe Barn. Maybe the, the Barn and Liverpool are probably the ones that we would have to worry about a little bit. But Nets, Ujelmand and Quadrago, Simic, um, Ben Seguir, Trincao and Gao Karras. Look, it's just these three players were having their pace because Fresney and Diamonde are not fit for today. I was hoping the team would have been fit because, look, Charisma is fantastic. I don't mind putting him in, but he's no Diamonde. I know this is also like one of those like it's like this is this is a big this is us showing how we can hang with the big boys but if you look at this way look we've played Arsenal hammered Arsenal wouldn't say Juventus are one of the big boys neither I wouldn't say Napoli are one of the big boys we played Man City drew Man City so like we've beat Arsenal drew Man City and then played Barcelona so like we've proven that we can hang with the big boys but it's the the difference between us and the likes of Man City and Barcelona and all that sort of stuff is they can take off their first team and put on a team that's very, very fucking good, where we can bring off our first team, and we have some people, some people who are decent, like we have some people who are good, but they're nowhere near, like if I bring off Hujelmand and bring on that young kid, he's nowhere near as good as Hujelmand, you know what I mean? Um, if I bring off Gao Karras, we just score goals for fun. If I bring off Gao Karras and put on Van Bommel, good player, not as good as Gao Karras, no mean. So like that's kind of where you need to get to. But sometimes you just need a wee bit of luck and the right players in the right positions. Simic has been doing so well. He's another one, I'm not going to lie. Probably, depending on how well he plays this season, he could be another one that we struggle to hold on to. Ben Seguir, I don't know. I've never, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never had Ben Seguir in any of my football manager teams. I have no idea what he's like. <laughs> We're about to all find out together. If you've played with Ben Seguir in your, any of your teams, leave him in the comments down below and let me know. I know he has a decent reputation, like our uh, ability, like he has good ability, potential ability. So like I just thought, right, 22 million. And like I said, we didn't overly have that many options when it came to like replacing people. We just didn't. It was either between they wanted fucking insane wages or the club wanted like crazy money for them. And I'm just, I'm not willing to pay stupid money. Are we, about, are we about to get a penalty for him? I don't think he even kicked him. I'm bro, I'm saying nothing. He hits a Scow Karras. I think it is Gow Karras. It's usually Trincao. <laughs> are we beating Barcelona? Dude, it's only 20 minutes. It's only 20 minutes. And like I said, also, before I forget, if you want this tactic, it will be in the pinned comment down below so you can download the tactic for yourself. The only thing I have changed in the tactic, and I will say this, it probably has made a good difference, is the left and right back I have on shoot less often instead of shoot more often. Now, that's pretty much the only change I've made to the tactic is they're now on shoot less often. The only reason I wanted them on shoot less often because they were bombing down the wing and then smashing it at the keeper instead of like running down the wing and then there was three people in the box. You should have seen it in the games that we've played. Like we passed, the, if, if, he, if he just would have passed the fucking ball across the net, we would have scored. So that's the only thing I've changed with the tactic is the left and right wing back now have shoot less often instead of shoot more often. <laughs> Boys, are we winning the Champions League this year? Like I'm not, that, I'm not joking. Like we have a good chance. We've beat Arsenal. Drew with Man City, and we're fucking slapping the brakes off Barcelona right now. Oh, I'm gonna hyperfend her in. <laughs> this can't be. He wasn't even remotely offside, ref. Stop it. This can't be real life right now. What? There's no way he was offside. Hold on. Did we just get cheated out of a goal? How the fuck's he offside? I got he's literally like he's like a step. Of course it's Frankie De Jong, a player that I love. 
this is the only thing I wish I, I need to learn how to sort this out. Because this happens a lot. This, like Frankie Young just dropped the shoulder. Fant fantastic play. Like Ben Zagir didn't stand a fucking chance. But like, we have one, two, three players on the back post. Somebody, like the Bast, should have rushed out here. Like he should have rushed out. I mean, that's like, granted, he may not even have had time. <sighs> that's poor keeping, right? Is Frankie de Jong just single-handedly going to bring this fucking match? It's from corners every time. It's from corners. It just... Why is nobody marking Frankie de Jong? Who's this? De Bast? De Bast should take one of these players and one of these players should be out here marking him. Like, how many... Like, it's happened once already. Why are they not going out? So Barcelona's just starting to get a lot of the ball. So I've basically changed the formation. I've brought everybody back a little bit. Just the same thing I do. I brought put two DMs in there and basically just crowded the center of the park. Like, we need to get the ball back. We can't let them have the ball. So it's like stupid shit. I guess we're just giving the ball away for no reason. So basically switched it up. I'm going to take the intensity down a little bit and I'm just going to stop us. I was hoping a goal would come of that. I was just sitting there patiently watching. I was like, please, somebody play it across, play it across. Yeah, but so busy. This is what I do. I'll sh show you after the goal here. Privacy for the people that watch all the time. The only thing I do with the tactic is this. I busy put two DMs in. I bring Trincao back. I put Gao Karras as an inside forward on attack. So he's still kind of up there. I'm busy just to bring the two wing backs to support. And we basically just crowd the middle of the park. That's pretty much it. And then just like bring the intensity down a little bit. There's no way. Bro, he's not offside. He was standing with another defender. Put your arms up, please put your arms up. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, you're not going to beat Baddy Shaber in the air. The man is six foot five. Six foot five. The Bass won that. Who headed it back in? The wee, the wee kid. Dude, the keeper probably wouldn't even beat Baddy Shaber in the air. And we win in 5 2. The one thing I have noticed with this is I honestly, like, I really like playing a San Quadrago at right back. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Just because he's big, strong, he's reasonably quick, super physical, it just, and he's really confident on the ball. <sighs> Dude, if I was Gao Karras, we probably would have been through. But yeah, just with his, just his physical presence. And like, don't go wrong, Fresnita is absolutely fantastic. But like, look, he just, he, is, he doesn't care. Who's, the only thing that lets him down, I was going to say he's his fucking crossing, but... <laughs> <laughs> big Van Babel. Dude, we are smashing Barcelona right now. What is Quadragos? I don't think I can click on him. I don't think his... I think his crossing's like 10. Dude, this is... This is... So if you ever watched the Atalanta save, Ruggeri had like 16 or 17 crossing. He was our left back for Atalanta. This is the type of shit he was doing. Man, that's a, an absolute... That's just whipped... That is, per, that is like a striker's wet dream. That type of ball in... And Van Bommel's like, what, 6'3", 6'4"? I mean, he might even be taller than that. Like, hold on, let's check it. Oh my god, it's like throwing me straight in. How right, big's Van Bommel? I think he's, I think he's massive. He's 6'4", 6'4". Where's the San Quadrago? Dude, I hate when it does this, like, at this page. What's this crossing? 10. <laughs> That's not, that, that was not a cross of a man that has 10 crossing. That... Is how you fucking play in the Champions League, boys. Ooh, dude, I'm not gonna lie. When Frankie De Jong brought it back to three two, I'm not gonna lie. I was worried a little bit. So after that match, things are looking pretty good, boys. No, I mean we're sitting in third. I'm not gonna lie. None of us expected us to be sitting in third. Let's be realistic. <laughs> so as you can see at the minute, played six. We won four. Drew. We drew against Napoli and Man City, and then we've also beat Barcelona, Marseille, Augsburg, and Juventus. We're doing pretty fucking well. I'm very, very happy with that. But everybody, I think that's going to be a good spot to stop off for today's video. Everybody, quickly before we leave, remember, I do stream live over on Twitch. I also have two other YouTube channels. So if you want to check any of that or content out, everything will be in the description down below. But guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to on YouTube. I told you would slap Barcelona.